What up, Big Brother 26 fans? This is your episode 7, July 31st episode recap. If you want more of this, make sure you're following. The episode starts with a recap of actually last week with Angela's HOA train. Then we roll into a segment with Quinn and him showing us all the different alliances he's in. He does confirm to the viewers that he is only actually truthful to Chemo and to Core. The next segment is to Core, Chelsea, Cam, and Cedric sitting outside in the hammock. Takor has a diary room session. She says that the four of them haven't officially formed anything, but they all look out for one another. And she mentioned she doesn't want to be seen together too often because she doesn't want to have like a cookout moment. Meanwhile, Angela's in the kitchen and she can see them through the door right here. In a diary room session, she basically says she sees them as a group and that she wants to be part of that group and she has to go tell Quinn because that's who she trusts most. Quinn is in a back room on a bed, I believe, and she tells him to go look out the window because that is the group. That's all she says. Quinn doesn't think anything of it at first, um, but then it kind of rolls in his head. So later that night, he let Takor know what was going on. Then Takor mentions to Cedric that Quinn told her what Angela had said, and she says that they have to be careful about that because Angela kind of has a big mouth and she gets too spirally in her head. Everyone heads to the living room to find out who's playing in the veto. Brooklyn gets picked, and so does Joseph. Power veto competition is Code Tower. Players must use zeros and ones to make a code tower. It has to stand tall enough for their laser to hit the top. First one to do so obviously wins. Everybody pretty much sucks at this game. They don't know how to build. I would have thought to use like cards, like a house of cards. It was far too complicated for these house guests. The person who came in second was Brooklyn. Kenny quickly figured out how to do it, and he wins. Congrats, Kenny, the guy who doesn't want to be here anyway. Chelsea asks if she can talk to Angela. She's like, hey, I heard through the grapevine that you said something about that group. I just wanted to know what you meant by that. And Angela's like, I just wanted to be part of that group. Um, nothing more. And Chelsea's like, okay, I was just asking because, you know, I heard through the grapevine. And Angela's like, no, I know you heard from Quinn because he's the only person I said that to. And Angela says, no, actually, Quinn did not come to me. Angela's upset by this. She goes right outside and she says, Quinn, I need to talk to you inside. On the way inside, she tells Lisa to wipe that smirk off her face. In the bathroom, Angela questions Quinn about who he told that information to. Quinn knows exactly what she's talking about, so he comes up front and he says to Cor. Meanwhile, Cor is at the bathroom door listening, and she walks in. Quinn tries to explain that he went out and looked, and he saw Cor was part of that group, and he is friendly with Cor, so he told Cor so that she could check in with Angela and make sure that they are good. Angela says, no, something doesn't add up. This, this doesn't sound right to me. It doesn't make sense. Takor sits down next to Angela and she tries to explain to Angela when you group a group of people like that together, like in seasons past, Angela completely cuts her off and says, no, don't say that. That is far from what I was trying to do. Takor again, just tries to calmly tell her how she's feeling and what it can be perceived as. And Angela interrupts again and is crying at this point. Takor frustrated, leaves. Angela walks out of the bathroom. She doesn't want to be around Quinn anymore. Cedric and Tucker are in the kitchen. She's crying and basically says, you know, don't take what I said as being racist. I'm not a racist. That her comments were the farthest thing from being racist. Cedric says, I don't, I don't think you're a racist. And he hugs her and he tells her to breathe and calm down. And it's, it's just the house. It's the game. We see her walk into the diary room, still visibly upset. At this point, Tucker tells Chelsea that he'll take one for the team and he'll volunteer to go up as a pawn. After some coming down, Angela asked Takor if she could talk to her. She apologizes for not listening to what Takor had to say, and Takor accepts her apology. We then see Tucker in the shower, and Mackenzie is in there. He says, I know you have a power, and it's probably a double vote. She denies this. Later in the storage room, she does talk to him. She's like, listen, I don't have a double vote, but I do have a power, and it only saves me, and it basically takes power away from the HOH, but that's all I'm saying. Tucker then pitches to Chelsea that at the veto ceremony, she should put up Mackenzie to flush out her power, and then if she needs to, she can still put him up. 
at the veto meeting, Kenny obviously uses the veto to save himself, and Chelsea ends up just putting up Tucker. She says in a diary room session that she didn't feel a need to piss off Mackenzie and Leah at this point. So those are our three nominees for tomorrow. One of them will win the AI Arena, and one of them will be going home. Who do you think it's going to be?